Most of us played this game for more than we would like to admit. Some even got to the point where they think they cannot learn anything anymore. Today we're going to challenge that mentality with 11 WoW tips and tricks for new, returning and veteran players. Tips and tricks that can save time, improve performance or simply make you a better player. Today we're also going to play a little game. If you learn one new thing, you're going to leave a like on the video. If you learn two new things, you're going to specify them in the comments down below. And if by any chance you learn three new things, drop by the stream and say hello at twitch.tv slash frosadamus. With that being said, let's get right into it, shall we? One of the first tips for today is how to maximize efficiency and save time by flying in Dalaran. If you come at this spot right here as you're going outside towards the Flight Master, you can come to this dark spot in between those two pillars and mount your epic flight. From here, you can either fly outside without being dismounted or come back whenever you enter the city as a dismounted player and mount back from this position and fly all the way to the bank or fly all the way to the auction house. This will save you time by a lot until you get usually, uh, well, dismounted. Another tip is if you're already here at the bank, you can go to this little park right to the bank on the Horde side. And as you can see, there are a couple of chairs. The small chair, the second one, it's a bit lower than the previous one, which uh, if you sit on hit, your feet will go under the ground a bit. So this means you will be able to mount your epic flight here and be able to fly, I don't know, to pick your daily quest or to get right outside of Dalaran, saving precious time. Now I have five alts, all of them have epic mounts and you don't know how awesome this is. Now let's move to the second tip for today. Second tip for today has to do a lot with spells, either if you're leveling a character from 1 to 80 or if you're already level 80, sometimes you forget to update your spells on the bar or the process can be simply too tedious. Now normally I wanted to do this with macros, uh, showing you how to basically macro a simple spell, show tooltip and uh, the name of the spell case sensitive and cast the name of the spell. The macro will always prioritize the max rank of spell, so if you put it there at level 1, whenever you will learn a new spell, it will automatically use the max rank. Now for those of you who think macroing most spells is too much work, there's an easy add-on called the Nova Spell Rank Checker, which will add a button to your spellbook. Once you click this button on the spellbook, all the spells that are downgraded on your bar will start glowing. Replacing them with a max rank and then checking the button again will remove them from the glowing thingy. This still requires a bit of manual work, and if you're still lazy, there's another add-on called Spell Rank, which if you do slash Spell Rank, will automatically update all your spells immediately to max rank. And then if you check again with Nova, they're all max rank. And you can just have the last one, or you can use the first one. Which one do you like? But all three options are viable. Now let's move to the next tip. One of the coolest tricks I've learned in World of Warcraft was the logout skip. This came mostly from the speedrunning community and the creators of Rested XP. If you're not familiar with the logout skip, there's an example here from the Rested XP guide, which there are dozens of them through the course of this guide, but I'm just going to show you how cool it is. Now, a lot of you probably know about this, but there are so many of them. Basically, you go to Undercity, either you take a portal or you teleport as a mage or you get a portal from a mage. And then once you're in Undercity right here on the Magic Quarter, you go a bit down towards the edge of this ledge and make sure you're almost falling. Your character is almost falling, you see, almost outside. And then you perform a logout. And once you log back in, you're going to be teleported outside of the city, skipping like basically two or three minutes of walking. This is great for leveling characters. This is just, just great by skipping and trying to get to the Zeppelin to Howling Fjord. And there we go. We're outside of Undercity. Now, this works only in underground cities like Undercity, Iron Forge. There are a couple of skips, Exodar and underground caves, caves or underground structures. If you want to know more about the logout skip, do a quick search on YouTube. And if you're interested in one of the Rested XP guides, use the link in the description and make sure to use my code FROSTADAMUS for 5% off. Now let's move to the next tip. This next thing makes me chuckle all the time because people often come on my stream and ask me, Frost, what is that loot add-on that you have in the corner of your screen? 
It got to the point where I start trolling people, but this is not necessarily an add-on, it's a feature that has been in the game for a while, at least I found about it at the launch of Classic slightly after the beta, and I've been using it all the time almost when I'm running dungeons or groups that have simply group loot, because you can check exactly what drops, who won the roll, and who didn't roll so far. So when I tell them on stream, just do a slash loot in game, they go like, wow, I've been playing this game for 20 years and I never knew about this. This happens more than enough. Let me know in the comments if you just found about this today. This next tip comes in form of a macro and it's a profession specific macro. If you go to macros and you create a simple macro, you can use it for prospecting, for milling and for disenchanting. For example, in my bags, I have currently four stacks of Saronite ore. The macro is quite simple, show tooltip saronite ore, slash use prospecting, slash use saronite ore. You put it on the bar and you just hit the keybind, hold shift, and you will automatically loot and automatically prospect or uh, disenchant all of the items. Now this is weird, I got two scarlet rubies, <laughs> but I think it happens quite often. We finished prospecting uh, five stacks of saronite and we got three scarlet rubies, quite lucky I would say. But this add-on can be modified and used for milling herbs as well for inscription. You can use the name of the flower, slash use milling, slash use gold clover, or it can be used for enchanting as well. If you do a saronite shuffle, you make a lot of rings and then you use the name of the ring and slash use disenchant. It's quite easy, quite nice to modify and quite simple to use. Let's move to the next tip. This next tip is a huge one and I think one of the best for today because it has to do something with your FPS and increasing the overall performance in 25-man raids such as Naxxramas and Ulduar, especially Ulduar as Ulduar will be more graphically intense than Naxxramas. We found it on Reddit from a guy called KukuSK419 but apparently he stole it from a bumper discord from a guy called KillerWatt. It doesn't matter, it's basically a step of uh, how to tweak your graphic settings and what to prioritize in terms of add-ons for raids. On top of this, by reading this thread, we found an add-on called Better Add-on List, which allows you to create a set for raiding, so you will disable all the add-ons that you don't need necessarily while raiding. You can see here how much they consume based on the green line they have on the side, uh, such as, for example, Ox will consume a lot, Beast Tool Tip will consume a lot, add-ons like Looking for Group Bulletin Board, Loon Best in Slot, add-ons like weak aura of course weak aura you probably need it for raid so you don't want to disable that but by making a set you can swap between raiding and normal gameplay and it's gonna help you a lot if you do this for five minutes you will set up your pc to run more smoothly while raiding in 25 man raids i think it's huge let's move to the next tip now the next tip is about nameplate distance you probably already know this one. In Classic, we used to make a macro to increase the nameplate distance, but now this one you can find it under names and nameplate distance options. Probably most of you know by it, but I'm pretty sure there are a lot of people that don't know because they ask me on stream every day. You just go with this one all the way to 41 yards, and as you can see, now the distance is way higher between me and the mob, and I can see his nameplate. This is awesome for AoE farming, this is awesome for PvP, and just in general. The next tip is a pretty simple one, both mounts, ground and flying on the same macro. Basically whenever you're in Dalaran, you're gonna use your ground mount, or in Orgrimmar, or whenever flying it's not available. And whenever you go to a spot where flying is available, it's gonna use the flying spot. Hence, it works with the first tip for today, like if you go to this spot, you're gonna get the, the flight mount from, from here. It's a very simple macro, you press escape, you go to macros, and you do a hashtag show tooltip, cast the name of the flying mount and slash cast the name of the ground mount. I tried other mounts, but some of them didn't work in Dalaran. This one seems to be working quite fine and it's quite simple. Now let's move to the next tip. This next tip is about the old world, about vanilla and TBC and how farming there or leveling characters there can get you a lot of money. Now some of the materials that you can find there, such as moss agat, such as mining materials, mithril bars, tin bars, are going quite expensive. If we're looking at some of the cloths like wall cloth and mage wave, rune cloth can get up in price and some of them can make you really good money. So if you already have a, a character to level in that direction, make sure to pick something like a mining profession or a profession that can do gathering. Or if you're farming in a specific spot, just check on the auction house if some of the items that drop there could be expensive. We got to the point where a simple shadow gem can be worth 12 gold on my server and sometimes during peak time even more expensive. Aquamarines, rune cloth is about 3 gold a stack and so on. By spending a lot of time there you will be able to make more gold. Now let's move to the next tip. 
Some of the new features added with Wrath of the Lich King come from interface features. If you use checkmark on equipment manager and preview talent changes, you will have another two add-ons which were not previously in the game that you can easily use. Before you learn any talent, you will have the option to learn. So if you click on it, you can uh, remove it if you don't like the one that you choose. That's going to be quite great. But the most fun one for me, it's like a simple equipment manager where you can make different types of sets and equip them whatever you feel like you need some. As you can see right now, I have equipped my DPS spec with my uh, Valor set and I just do a click and equip here and I equip my full tanking set in one click and everything in my bag is still organized and nice. You can make a total of 10 sets. It's really easy to make. You just equip the gear that you want either from here, either from everywhere and then you just type a name and save it's a lot of time and it's quite easy to use. If you don't use it so far, make sure to use it. It's a life changer. And the last tip for today, it's a macro that can be used by a variety of classes for area of effect spells such as Flame Strike, Rain of Fire, Death and Decay, Blizzard, and so on. What the macro basically does, it puts your spell at the cursor and you don't have to click it again as it will automatically cast once you click the keybind. Basically, classically, you would go for Flame Strike, it will appear on your cursor and then you would have to click to be able to cast it but if you use it like slash use at cursor and the name of the spell it's gonna automatically go just like this whatever your cursor is and you can do that for a blizzard as well and it's gonna basically save a millisecond there and now it's basically a min max thingy but i think it's very useful for a lot of classes thanks for watching i hope this was useful or at least entertaining to watch remember our little game and until next time Stay frosty. Bye-bye.